All right, folks, here we go. 1.1 simple probabilities. And let's look from the very beginning. Probability is the likelihood of something occurring. It involves making predictions about uncertain situations or events. An outcome is a possible result of an experiment conducted. A probability experiment is a specific action that has at least two possible outcomes. The probability of a certain outcome represents how likely it is to occur. Now, the ex when we're looking at probability, there are different types of probabilities. The first type that we're looking at today is the experimental probability. The experimental probability of an outcome is a measure of how frequently it occurs in, the, in a probability experiment. Probability can be expressed as a fraction, decimal, or percent. So here's the formula for the probability. Let's say we have a probability of A occurring. Okay. Now, how do we calculate that? Well, that's equal to the number of times A occurs divided by the number of times we've conducted the experiment, so the number of trials. So when we look at probability, this is how we calculate it. Calculate it. Now, don't forget, when, it ex when it's expressed as a fraction, you must express in lowest terms. If it's expressed, it can be expressed as a decimal, and probability can be expressed as a percent. So one more time, the probability that A occurs is equal to the number of times A occurs over the number of total trials that happen. Now, something else to note, experimental probability is also no, can be also referred to as the statistical probability or empirical probability. And oftentimes, uh, in textbooks, especially at the university level, they may use these words in, in place of calling it experimental probability. All right, let's look at an example. Aaron spins the spinner 48 times. The results were recorded below. So here we go. Here's a table. And we recorded the color and the number of times that color occurred. So in a tally. So every time that color occurred, a tally occurred. A tally was taken. So yellow, orange, red, pink, blue, and green. And the tally was recorded as follows. Okay, so here we go. And what we're going to do is answer questions based on this chart. And let's fill in the numbers. So we have 6, 12, 6, 12, 6, 6. And what we do is make sure we add it up, and it should equal the total number of times that it, it was done, the experiments that we had taken, the outcomes. All right, here we go. Let's answer some questions. And the first question, oh, that's a little too much, folks, so let's start with the first question here. So same table that we had earlier, but now what we're going to do is we're going to answer the following question. Determine the experimental probability of the spinner landing on each color. Express your answer as a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So I want all three answers shown. Lucky for us, it's really only two fractions we need to know, either 6 out of a total of 48 and 12 out of 48, and the other ones are re repeats. So, the probability of, say, yellow. The probability of yellow is 6 out of 48. Is that an acceptable answer? Well, folks, that's not, because that fraction is not reduced. 1 out of 8 is acceptable. And we can convert 1 out of 8 to a decimal, 0 0.125, and as a percent, which is 12.5%. Now, probability of yellow is also equal to the probability of red, which is also equal to the probability of blue, which is also equal to the probability of green. 
and we do the same for orange. So looking here, yellow, red, blue, and green have the same number. So we use that and say all of these have the probability of 12.5%. Then we calculate orange and pink. Orange and pink, and we say, okay, orange and pink are 12 out of 48, which is equal to 1 over 4, which is equal to 0 0.25, which is equal to 25%. So these three are acceptable answers. Now, determine the sum of the probabilities and explain what it means. Well, let's add, let's say, all the fractions. So the probability of yellow was 1 eighth, plus the probability of orange, which is 1 quarter, plus the probability of red, which is 1 eighth, plus the probability of pink, which is 1 fourth, or 1 quarter, plus probability of blue is 1 eighth, probability of green is 1 eighth. What do you expect this answer to equal? That's right, you expect it to equal 1. Why? Because if we add all the probabilities, that should equal 48 different answers over 48 different trials. So it makes sense that we have the number 1. 1 represents 100%. 100% of the values recorded. So again, guys, when you're adding those sum of probabilities, it, sh it is supposed to equal 1. And if it doesn't, there's some calculations that were done incorrectly. Next. You're asked, could this spinner look like this particular example? Now, some of you are going to be going, uh, no, and some of you will say yes. It's actually not the yes or no that I'm looking at, but your justification. So, for example, somebody who says yes to this, they can say, Yes, it looks like this because it has it contains all the colors in the table and it depends on how they spun the spinner, like whether they flicked it the same way and that ended up in this result. Now someone else might say, no, this spinner does not represent this particular uh, chart because in the chart it says orange and pink were spun more frequently, were, were the result more frequently than yellow, red, blue, and green. Now sometimes I might ask you a question, for example, like draw a spinner that represents these results. And you would have to say, okay, well, since orange and pink account for 24, out of the 48 parts of the pie, we would put orange and pink, these two, orange and pink, side by side, covering 25% of the pie. The other remaining colors, uh, yellow, red, blue, and green, would represent the remaining part of the graph, so let's say the lower part of the graph, and they would each have a piece of the pie. So folks, in all honesty, I can't really give you an answer here that's defined. It really depends on how you look at the question and how you answer the question. As long as your answer you can justify, guess what? You got the answer. All right, next. Example two. A market researcher is conducting a telephone poll to gather data about which type of television service families use the most. Now the table illustrates the results. So here's a table, TV service, tally, and the different types of TV service are cable, satellite, internet, antenna, and none. And here's the values. Just a quick correction to the word satellite. There was a spelling error. So here we go when we're looking at this. And question A says the following. Determine the experimental probability of using each television service. So we're now we're going to, and does it say what kind? No. Nope. So I would have to accept all three possibilities, whether it's a percent, whether it's a fraction, or whether it's a decimal. Okay. And so let's do that. Probability of cable is equal to 48 out of 115. 
Next, that can't be reduced, folks, so we just leave it as 48 over 115. Okay. Probability of satellite is 42 out of 115. Internet is 15 out of 115, which can be reduced. So reduce it, and you get 3 over 23. And finally, sorry, not finally, but probability of antenna is 4 out of 115, and probability of none is 6 over 115. So there are your probabilities of the different types of television service. So how does that help us? Well, let's look at Part B. Part B says, who might be interested in these results and why? Well, again, this is not something that I can give a definite answer for. This is something where you have to actually determine. All right, who would be interested in this? Let's say someone who's investing in stocks. Who would they want to invest with? Well, where there is more likely to increase in popularity. Another person that might be interested is someone looking to go into the communications business. What kind of business would they like to open? Antenna doesn't sell as well as satellite or cable. And in fact, folks, a lot of people are moving away from cable because of the costs associated with it. They can find anything and everything on the Internet. So maybe internet will be going up. So it's not actually the answer you give, but the justification you give behind it. That's going to be important for you to note. Moving forwards, part C. Suggest how these results may change over time. And explain why you think so. So again, the answer to this is open-ended. What will you say? What will you answer? Make sure that you justify it with a strong and valid answer. And guess what, folks? Uh, uh, you can't. Ref It'll be something that I can give you a mark for. The idea is you need to justify. Argue your point. This is like statistical analysis, folks. Whenever stats are presented to someone, if someone told you that 9 out of 10 dentists love Aquafresh, well, you know, you're led to believe that 9 out of 10 dentists want you to use Aquafresh. But then you watch another commercial a couple of days later on another channel, and it says, oh, 9 out of 10 dentists want Colgate, prefer Colgate. So you just went and bought Aquafresh, and now you're going to go and buy Colgate because 9 out of 10 dentists prefer Colgate. What happened to the 9 out of 10 that wanted Aquafresh? Folks, you need to understand how statistics are calculated. Next, we also need to understand the concept of subjective probability. Subjective probability often involves little or no mathematical data, where a probability estimate is based on intuition. For example, here's the best example I can give you. I'm 99% certain that you want a mark boosting project. And in this course, fortunately for you, a mark boosting project is one of the things that we do give you. You do put in the work, you get the marks. Now, how do you identify what's certain and what's not? S uh, impossible means zero. It's impossible, 0% zero chance. It is impossible, okay? that um, Hurricane Harvey will be a Category 5 storm in Ontario. It's impossible. Whereas we can be certain about something. I am 100% certain. I am certain that um, there is school tomorrow, unless it's a Friday. The, uh, or the weekend. But again, the idea is if today is Thursday, I'm 100% certain there's going to be school tomorrow being Friday. So the idea is that subjective probability doesn't really have a number associated. It's more of an opinion. Okay? It's based on intuition. What you know, based on knowledge. So let's look at some examples of ways we can say it. 
Estimate the subjective probability of each of the following outcomes. And then justify your estimates. Now notice, I keep saying justify. Justify, in the case of what I'm asking, I'm asking you to tell me what is why you stated your make your statement. If you state me why and it's valid, your point is valid. So, first of all, we, i.e. here, in Mississauga, we will have a heat alert in December. Okay, now, if we were certain or impossible. Well, I hope all of you are saying impossible. Impossible because here in Canada in December, it's winter. But if we were in Florida or in Hawaii, it's we're probably certain it's going to have a heat alert. So in Canada, I would say impossible. But in, the, in Florida or Hawaii or the Dominican Republic, I would say mm, certain they're going to have a heat alert in December. So the idea is it depends on where. So if you can justify your reasoning, you can justify your mark. Next part we have here is the sun sorry the sun will set in the west tonight so let's look at that question the sun will set in the west tonight that's right you're certain it will set tonight in the west because the sun always sets in the west here in canada part c the next person through the door will be female. Are we saying, are we, is it impossible? Is it certain? Or are we somewhere in between? Is it maybe? And again, in this case, we can say maybe. We have a 50-50 chance of the person walking through will be female. Last example. A coin tossed fifty times and comes a coin is tossed fifty times and comes up tails thirty times. What is the experimental probability of a heads and of a tails? Okay? So heads and tails. So it's probably easier to say tails because of the question that we got. So let's calculate that. The probability of getting tails is as follows. It came up thirty times over a possible time of 50. That you must reduce to give me 3 over 5. Could you give me 0 0.6? Of course. Could you give me 60%? Of course. So in this experimental probability, we have a 60% chance of getting tails. In heads, it will be the remainder. What is the remainder? Well, the remainder is, probability of heads, is 40, sorry, 20 out of 50, which is equal to 40%, or 2 over 5. So we have a 40% chance of getting heads, a 60% chance of getting tails. What are you more likely to choose if you knew these probabilities? And that's where probability comes into effect. Now, some of you are going, well, how can you get 30 times a tails when you toss a coin? You only have one and two. Well, folks, that depends on how it's thrown, how high it's thrown, who throws it, the conditions around where it's being thrown. Is it on? Uh, and all of those conditions de will depend on the answer that you get here. So it's very important that you note that and that you're careful uh, when you're doing an experiment to do it exactly the same each and every single time to get a better sense of the results. We're going to be looking more and more through these probabilities throughout this unit. So, on that note, have a numerical day.